In this video, we will talk about the applications of reflection and refraction and we will consider some daily life pictures which will clarify these phenomena. So the very first, the applications of reflection. We know that reflection is a phenomenon in which light waves bounce back of a surface and consider this a light ray which is hitting this surface and the surface is a smooth surface and this light ray is bouncing back of this surface. The perpendicular to the surface is actually this line. For a smooth surface some laws are there and the very first one is the incident and reflected rays will always be in one plane. The incident is will is the reflected is will is the perpendicular to the surface will all lie in one plane. And the angle of incidence will always be equal to the angle of reflection for a smooth surface. We can have a smooth surface and a rough surface. So a smooth surface, those laws will be valid for the smooth surface only and we will have the angle of incidence equal to the angle of reflection and this we call specular reflection. When we will have a rough surface, those laws are not valid for a rough surface and we, cause, we call it diffused reflectance. Now the diffuse reflectance we will not study because the mathematics we have developed for the specular reflection only but we will see some daily life phenomena which are related to the diffuse reflectance as well. This is one of the example. Now here the water is calm and it behaves like a smooth surface and it just look like a mirror and this mountain image we can see very clearly in this water. So it's an example of the specular reflection. And if I look here, then the water is not calm, it is wavy like and this is causing a diffused reflectance and we are not able to see the clear image of the mountain here. The very first application of reflection of light is our image in a flat mirror. Now we can see here that the light ray hitting here and going to the mirror and then back from the mirror to our eyes. Similarly from all these parts but let's say consider the last ray here which is coming from the toe and it is hitting the mirror at this point. Now the angle of incidence will be equal to the angle of reflection because it's a flat surface and it goes to the eye here. Now the eye is not actually seeing the bending of light here but it will be tracing the apparent location or the image directly by tracing back these rays and the image will look like that it is just like behind the mirror. We can utilize this in cars we are having convex mirrors in order to get more field of view here and we can see the vehicle coming behind us here in this mirror and a large area around it as well. So this just seems like it is just behind this mirror but it is actually the image that we are perceiving. If instead of a convex mirror we are having a concave mirror is we do have it in the headlight of the car and this bulb is actually emitting in random directions when it hits here the concave mirror then it makes it like a parallel rays and the light from the headlamp of a car just seems like a beam of rays going out. So it is one of the application of the reflection. Another very important application of the reflection is the total internal reflection and here in the total internal reflection this is a medium let's say consider this is water 
and it is having a high refractive index and this is air which is having low refractive index we call this a dense medium and this is the rare medium the laws which are governing this reflection and refraction is the Snell's law which we will discuss in a while if the angle of incidence is at zero degree then the light will go into the next medium without any deviation in it so it will totally transmit and there will be no reflection at the boundary and no deviation will occur while moving from one medium into another medium when we throw it at a slanted angle for example 15 degree here then this is the perpendicular line and the angle of incidence here is equal to the angle of reflection here but is this is a rare medium then the light ray will refract and the angle of refraction will be more than the angle of reflection because this is a rare medium so it will go away from the perpendicular line here if we increase the angle to 30 degree then reflection will be at 30 degree because it's a smooth surface while the refraction will be at more angle and it will go more away from the perpendicular line if we increase the angle more then the refraction will become uh, more here the deviation will be more and then the angle at which this the refracted ray will be exactly 90 degree means it will move on this surface then we will call that angle is a critical angle so if the incident angle becomes a critical angle then the refracted ray will be actually at 90 degree here so sine 90 will become 1 and we will have sine theta critical equal to this so for different media the critical angle will be different and when we will throw the light at an angle more than the critical angle here then there will be no refraction but all the light will reflect internally and we call this the total internal reflection and the, its example we see in hot weather is on the surface of a road we see that there is some water in reality it is not water but it is actually the total internally reflected light of the sun and the sun will always be in front of us when we will be viewing such illusion and it will have the image or the reflection of the sky and nearby objects will also be reflected in this image now in applications of refraction we know that the refraction of light is actually when light passes through a transparent medium it bends at the boundary between the two media so here if the light will go exactly perpendicular then it will not cause any deviation from its path although some compression of the waves will occur which we will discuss in the coming slides but no deviation will occur but when it will hit it at a slanted angle then the light will deviate from its actual path here and the laws of refraction are actually responsible for this that the refractive index we define is this is the ratio of the velocity of light in vacuum or free space to the speed or velocity of light in any other medium so for vacuum the refractive index the c and this v is equal to c so we are having the refractive index equal to one while for any other media this v will always be less than c and we will have this n always greater than one now as this incident light hits the boundary at an angle i then the actual path of it is this one but this will 
just turn or bend toward the normal here and this will bend toward the normal when this is a rare medium and this is a dense medium or the refractive index of this medium is less than the refractive index of this medium. The reverse is true as well. If the ray is generated from inside the, this medium, then it will exactly follow this path. Now as it is entering from the dense medium to the rare medium, then it will go away from its um, initial path here and away from the normal to the surface. So both uh, paths are equally possible and they are reversible as well. The law of refraction which is the Snell's law of reflection will calculate all these parameters for us. Is one of the example when we look to an object inside water then we are in air and the refractive index of air is less than the refractive index of water and when we look at a brick here or any other object then considering two rays from it they are coming when this ray goes to the surface it bends and it reaches I. Similarly when this ray from any other point it comes here then it bends as well. Now the rays that we are considering only two rays is only for our geometrical understanding in reality infinite number of rays are actually coming in from here but is all the rays will be following this path or this kind of bending so only two are sufficient for us to see that what is going on with the light rays this ray will come here now the eye is not experiencing the bending of light but it will always trace these two rays back in a straight line and we will see the virtual or the apparent image of this body here so this is not the actual position of the brick here but in apparent position because i will always trace back these rays in a straight line we can see that this is slightly deviated from this in it an upper point in this pond here. If we look at the pencil image here, then the pencil will also seems bended to us and it will also follow the same principle of bending of light rays and I will be tracing it back in a straight line. So we will see the edge of the pencil instead of this point we will see it at this point so whenever light travels between different media we will always see the apparent location and not the actual location of the body